hours of the regular show on Terrestrial Radio, and you wanted a little bit more, so that's why you found the Gun Talk After Show podcast, where we saved all the best things that we can't say on regular radio. Now, here's Tom, Michelle, and Jim for the Gun Talk After Show. The After Show begins right now, because we have Jim over there, we have Tom over there, Tom here. Hey, Tom Henning, how you doing? I'm back. He's uh, back. Good. He's, are you still not Michelle? I am still not Michelle. When you work, when you're working the phones, do they still do that to you? Yeah, he was working me hard today. <laughs> oh. He was he was being a slave driver today. Oh yeah. Oh good. It's That's cute. Good. There's a little sign on his desk now. It says "Reserved for Not Tom." <laughs> <laughs> so when she comes back, you know. So when, when Michelle's out, Tom's filling in and going, yeah, okay. That's that's fun. I like oh, that. Let her have it. <laughs> I'm sorry. The uh, the mistress of the 327 is not here at the moment. Oh. The princess is gone. Okay. Yeah, she's got a couple weeks of shooting matches. She's doing her skirmishes. Well, she's got a lot of nerve to miss gun talk to go shooting. Yeah, well. <laughs> boy. I see if there was ever I mean, a good excuse, it'd here? be that, you know. Yeah, geez. Is that, uh, she's doing her black powder thing? Uh, I'm pretty sure, yeah, I didn't go into Yeah, they're skirmishes, they are. She said, know. Jim, is there any chance I could? I said, yes. On the plus <laughs> side, she comes back with good stories. That's true. Ah, okay, yes. It smells like gunpowder, which is good, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's just the, the ultimate perfume, right? <laughs> It's black powder smell. She wears black powder smell. We wear Hoppy's number nine cologne. So it works out great. <laughs> aromatherapy. Right. Uh, oh, aromatherapy. I think we call this uh, ammunition therapy, something like that. Close I like it. Hey, we got some folks on hold here. Let's uh, jump over to Charlie on two out of Fairfield, Montana. Hey, Charlie, you're on Gun Talk. What's happening? Hey, how are you? Good. I just, I just wanted to, you asked what kind of gun, you know, ca- people carried and shot. Right, and- right. I've got an older Smith and Wesson 38 Special. I've got a 357 um, Smith and Wesson uh, Highway Patrol model, and then I've got, of course, numerous guns. Being from Montana, I'm you know big into hunting. And then I heard you guys talking about the black powder. I also have a I was a Lewis and Clark reenactor, so I have a 50 caliber uh, flintlock black powder rifle. Nice. So Lewis and now I know of Civil War reenactors and all, but Lewis and Clark reenactor, that's a new one for me. What what do you do? Well, it was mainly during the early um, you know, during the bicentennial of Lewis and Clark in eighteen oh five when they came through Montana. And so we had a bicentennial in two thousand five and you know, they were in Montana some of the longest in most of their you know, their their expedition and so right. I'm, I was a Lewis and Clark Green actor out of Great Falls where they spent about 30 days because they had to portage the falls in, great, in the Great Falls area. And then they sure. also were uh, in the process of building or trying to build a, what was called the wooden frame boat hmm. and trying to use deer and elk hides to make the boat to take the place of some of the cottonwood trees, the dugout cottonwood trees they were using for, for canoes. What was the, um, the Stephen Ambrose book? Was that Undaunted yep. Courage? Yep. Yep, yep. That's and I have actually the um, number thirty copy of the book that came off the printing press. He Ooh. did a he did a big uh, book tour in Montana, and then Ken Burns also did uh, Lewis and Clark, and our group did the did the scenes where you ever see the canoe being drugged across the horizon. Oh, that's cool! So you got to do the that's- TV show for Ken Burns. Right, and then and then cool. he didn't pay us anything, but in order to repay us or you know give us any money because we didn't have any you know didn't speaking parts, mm-hmm. but he came out and did a fundraiser for us, and I think we made somewhere in the neighborhoods of about uh, forty thousand dollars for that one night of fundraiser, and then we Ooh. had Lewis and Clark food, you know, whatnot. So. Okay, so for your reenactment crew, they did this fundraiser. You made a ton of money. That's fabulous. Right, we were a nonprofit organization, and just. You know, guys that were interested in history, and so we recreated all the activities or many of the activities they did around Great Falls, Montana. That's neat, Charlie. Let me ask you: Did your when you got into the reenactment, did you do it through your interest in firearms first, or was it more your interest in history? Well, I'm a history teacher, so it was mainly through fire or through the history, my interest in history. But yeah, right. then I grew, you know, grew more interested, of course, and we had all the all the different uh, guns of the Lewis and Clark expedition. And, and also we had the Brown Besses. We had the Harper's Ferries 54 caliber rifle. You know, we had the Charleville muskets. We had the air rifle. So, yeah, that, that really expanded my knowledge, you know, especially of the Lewis and Clark gun. 
It's interesting. I mean, it just happens that you call, and I love the conversation because one of the things I've always thought is that some of the folks, maybe most of the folks who rail against guns and gun ownership, they have no idea of the breadth of interest and like these pockets of interest like you're talking about and where people are really studying and celebrating history kind of through firearms, aren't they? Exactly, exactly. And that was, that was, of course, was one of our bigger demonstrations was all the different, I mean, and then uh, the cannons that they had on some of the pierogues and they brought with them. I mean, it was, yeah, it's, it was all part of our presentation was, you know, how the you know, how important the guns were on the expedition. And, of course, that fed them and, you know, it was somewhere in the neighborhoods of four deer and an elk that they needed in order to, you know, to survive, you know, the expedition a, a day. Well, so, that's, that's why they were always out there spotlighting deer, right? Oh, no, no, not spotlights. No, no, no. <laughs> well, there were no spotlights back then. <laughs> no, and I was, I was doing actually a demonstration on our, on our, on our iron frame boat. It was a, just what it says was an iron frame, and then you know they covered it with elk hides and buffalo hides and and used beeswax and whatnot. And so, you know, I'm kind of uh, talking first person with this little boy, a group of people, and I said, yeah, I just end up shooting a deer down here, down by the river, and he kind of looks at me, and, you know, I'm thinking I'm 1805, and the little mm-hmm. boy goes, you can't do that. That's a national park. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, well, it is now. In now 1805, it, is, yeah. it wasn't. <laughs> yeah, and then I couldn't really, you know, we tried to stay in character in right. 1805. And, you know, people hold up cameras to their faces and say, well, what's that? That's a funny rock you got there. Oh, you know, that's so. great. <laughs> I love that. Um, uh, terrific so stuff. I'm actually in Minnesota driving the back roads of Minnesota, and I heard your radio program on, you know, the program on the radio, so I thought I'd just give you a call and, you know, thank you for your, you know, help in keeping our Second Amendment alive and in power. Well, thank you. And, you know, it's Gun Talk. You can check us out at guntalk.com, and you can find a station near you when you get home. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do Sa- that. Sounds good. Charlie, thank you so much for the call. I appreciate that. Thank you. Hey, all righty. You know, I got an idea here, guys. <clears throat> Ron uh, is on four. Hey, Ron, let me bring you in for a second. Are you there, man? Yes. Hey, yes. All right, Ron, here, I got to do this. Um, I need to take a quick break. Let me, like, give me just a second here, and I'm going to come back to you, okay? Don't go anywhere. No problem. All right, don't go anywhere. All right, we'll be right back with more of the after show. And for the Second Amendment with Franklin Armory. Their three-position BFS Gen 3 trigger is one of the hottest products for your AR, HK, ACR, CZ, and B and T in curved and straight variations. In position three, fire one round on pull and one round on release. Ideal for both tactical and competition use. Get a 10% discount on everything with the code word GUNTALK at FranklinArmory.com. Attacks happen every day. How will you react? See real people put into real life criminal attack situations on First Person Defender. Discover what works and what doesn't. Kidnapping, ATM robbery, home invasion, and other attacks. Learn how to save your life and the lives of your family. Get the entire first season on DVD at shopguntalk.com. Get prepared. Shopguntalk.com. All right, Ron, we're back with you now. I appreciate you hanging in there. You're, you're in, uh, I'm seeing, it looks like Yellville, Arkansas. Correct. Yeah. Where, where is Yellville? <laughs> uh, we have a lot of places like that in Arkansas that nobody ever heard of. <laughs> okay. Just a little country town on a highway going east-west. Uh, not much <laughs> else to say for it. It's one of those, when you say, where, what's it near? It says, actually, we're not near anything. <laughs> Nope. Right down the road from Screamsburg. <laughs> Screams. uh, we're, we're almost the center of the state and very close to the Missouri line, up around Bull Shoals Lake. Okay, yeah, sure. I was, uh, I've been to Bull Shoals. 
Uh, let's see. I was up. I was up at uh, Gaston's Resort not too long ago. Oh well, then you've been to one of our best. Yeah, that's a, that's a great little place. We're ducked in there and had some lunch at uh, Gaston's Resort. Boy, you talk about a great place to go fishing. Holy cow. Oh, did you look up when you were eating the ceiling? Have you seen the antiques they have in there? Hanging, hanging on the ceilings, yes, as well as like a gazillion bicycles. It's a weird restaurant there. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. But a great people and a great place to eat. Yes, it is. We just had, uh, we just had a, a friends of the NRA uh, dinner there just a few months back. Oh, I'll had be a done. great turnout. Great turnout, and uh, I bought more than I should have, of course. <laughs> well, thank you for your contributions. <laughs> right. Yeah. Hate when that happens. <laughs> yeah. Don't we all? That's why we go to them, right, Jim? Yeah, hell yeah. Yeah, yeah. I do if there's any local or close by. Uh, uh. We. Got to support them. That's right. All right, so you got a question here. Home, yes, home defense? Um, it's a, 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 for a defensive shotgun for my wife. Mm-hmm. Home defense. Um, she, I have two 12 gauges. She shot them both. I don't like shooting them, so she doesn't like shooting them. But here's what I had in mind. Mm-hmm. Uh, 20 gauge absolute, semi-automatic, as close to a tactical shotgun. If you can get absolutely nothing over 18 inches, 18 and a half, mm-hmm. and um, a small stock. She's not going to be shooting it. I'm not going to teach her to shoot it uh, at the shoulder. She's going to pinch it into her side, and I'd like to have five or six shots. And um, there are some out there, but almost nobody has a, a 20 gauge semi automatic like that. And I've thought about, well, going to, okay, a Benelli mm-hmm. and taking it to, the, to my gunsmith and have him cut that down and see if I can get an aftermarket stock. I want her to have close to as short as she can have. And that's the second part of the question. There's several manufacturers out there today. Selling these "quote unquote" shotguns, I believe they're called uh, modified pistols. Yeah, uh, but I'm I'm, I'm going to try to get you off of that idea, and here's why: um, w- when you have a real stock and you can put it on your shoulder, you just don't feel the recoil. Shooting these uh, things that you're just holding in your hands, you got to take the recoil in your hands with nothing going against your shoulder. And I know the 20 gauge doesn't kick much, but it kicks a- enough. And the other thing is you can actually use optics or sights when the gun's on your shoulder versus just kind of pointing it. And it's really, really easy to miss something with a shotgun inside of, you know, inside of room distances. Uh, I mean, because you're only shooting a pattern that's like, what, three or four inches across. It's just, that's as big as the pattern's going to be. Yes. I would really urge you to try to go with a regular stock. Let me ask you a question. I, and I'm not saying the semi-auto is a bad idea, but could she handle, could she operate a pump? No. 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 And for for the, the purposes, I, I just, um, I, I thought the semi, a good, reliable semi-automatic, uh, it takes away having to do that. Right. Um, and I thought that would be a benefit. Um, again, in um, um, aiming it, uh, when you rack a shotgun, you're nowhere near the point of aim you just were. Uh, well, I, I don't know about that. I mean, <laughs> you, you should be racking that gun with the uh, gun pointed straight out there. Well, I don't know why you wouldn't be still pointing where you're supposed to be. Well, exactly right. I just... But, Chances of being as close to the first shot might not be the same. Um. Well, I tell you what, and I'm afraid we're about to lose you on the connection, so I'm going to I'm going to say this real quick and hope that you can hear me. Um, it's not a bad idea. I like where you're going with this, and there are some options in terms of uh, semi-autos out there, but I would not completely discount a pump. Uh, there are some youth model and actually short barrel pumps. The Mossberg's got the flex system where you put a little short stock on it and make it fit somebody. Uh, Benelli, of course, makes some really good uh, semi-autos as well. Uh, I, I kind of like where you're going. I think a 20 gauge is a really good home defense gun, and there are a lot of good loads out there. So I hope that works for you. I hope we got you before we lost the signal there. 
uh, that's kind of the and guys. That's the challenge of cell phones. You got somebody on, and then he drives right out of coverage, and right. they're gone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but somehow we can blame it on Michelle, can't we? Ooh, I like that. Yeah, I think. So. Would you, you know, text her and ask her why this guy dropped off? Because I'm sure between volleys, she'll be able to hear her cell phone on skirmish. Right? Yeah, <laughs> blah, 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 blah. right. You know, yeah. I, I agree. It's, I agree totally with your with your shoulder stock idea. However, if he's hell bent on that, a laser might be optimal. For yes, something like if, you, that. if you're going to go yeah. with uh, the pistol grip type of gun. Uh, or the, even the old cruiser style uh, mm-hmm. on shotguns, a laser is a really good idea. It's a good thought because now you don't have to worry about the aiming. As well, much. I guess then again, that would be good on any home shotgun. Well, that's true, You're and not, not a bad you. idea. Yeah. And I'm looking right now. Uh, Benelli has something called the Montefeltro. It's a mm-hmm. lightweight 20 gauge. I actually have one of those. It's been around for a while. Yeah, it's been around a long so, time. Yeah. They also have. Ooh, wait. Yeah, I know he didn't want to pump, but. Uh, Mossberg's got a good pump. Uh, Benelli's got a compact Nova pump shotgun that is a real nice little gun. When the when that Nova first came out many years ago, I looked at it and said, that is the ugliest <laughs> shotgun. Yeah. I mean, it is. It's yeah. just, you're going, and you know what it is. It's just not traditional. Right. And then I got to shoot it, and I thought, that is one of the best shooting shotguns. Really? <laughs> yeah. That's just, funny. It was crazy. I said, man, this thing feels good. But it didn't look like the guns I'd grown up with. So you go, well, that's weird because it's different, right? And what is it about us that we don't – things that are new or different, we don't. We tend to generally default to I don't like it. I saw a picture of one that I'd, I'd never heard of a 28-gauge before. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah? And actually, we went to my barber. Of course, my barber has guns and ammo magazines and whatever in his – while right. you're waiting to leaf through. And Right. Yeah, there was an ad for a 28-gauge. I'm like – Wow, it's never like a even dove gun, isn't it? Well, twenty-eight gauge. The only reason it exists is because American Skeet has four different gauges that you shoot. So you shoot in twelve, twenty, twenty-eight, and four ten. If there weren't American Skeet, there really would not be a twenty-eight gauge. But having said that, it's a really good, fun uh, shot shell. It has. Considerably more knockdown power or you know, ability to break targets than a 410 with very little recoil. The problem, and here's where it really gets interesting, is that they don't sell a lot of them and they don't sell a lot of 28 gauge ammo. And as a result, 28 gauge ammo costs more than 12 gauge ammo. Right, right. <laughs> it's kind of nuts. And every time I think of getting a 28 gauge, I think, well, that would be really cool. And, it, and they are, they're cool. Yeah, but you know what? You could get a 20-gauge, get a lightweight 20-gauge, and use light loads in it and do everything the 28 will do and more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm always talking myself out of it. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you know me. I want it just because it's different. Well, well, if you really want different, okay, here, Google this one. Says the guy with the 8-millimeter Mauser. (laughs) Yes. There is a 32-gauge. Really? Yes. Now, try to find Find ammo for that puppy. I was going to say, as Norm Crosby put it best years ago to dis- describe why 28 gauge is cheaper than 12. Oh, it's just simply supply and command. <laughs> <laughs> he was the uh, the master of the Malaprop. Malaprop, he? yes, he was. He was Norm great. Crosby, man. Now, you would have to uh, go to YouTube to look at him to know what we're talking about. But, yeah, he was awfully good at that. And a lot of guys have picked up on that since, but he was the king. Yep, exactly. Hey, let's take another quick break. We'll come back and... Uh, we could fill in the uh, lines between the 28 and the 32 gauge, which means there should be about, what, oh, four <laughs> gauges in there. 29 and a half gauge. Perfect. Founded with the singular purpose of building fine sporting firearms, Kimber creates a handgun for every person and a rifle for every adventure. While embracing modern manufacturing techniques, every Kimber depends on practiced hands for assembly, fit, and finish. There's no compromise in features, materials, or performance. Synonymous with quality, precision, and excellence, and made in America. Kimber is what all guns should be. Visit KimberAmerica.com. That's KimberAmerica.com. Want great deals on guns, ammunition, and gear? Download the free Gundelio app today. With Gundelio, you can search for deals, listen to the Gun Talk podcast, 
watch gun videos, read gun news, and get notifications right to your phone about deals and special offers. Save money on the products you want from the companies you love. New deals, discounts, and rebates added daily. Gun Dealio, available for free in the App Store and Google Play. Back with you. Hey, I forgot to mention this during the regular show, but this is a cool story. Uh, the 2017 uh, FBI crime report just came out. And, you know, the FBI does their uh, uniform crime reports every year, and that's kind of where we get our stats on crimes and what's going on. We had two years of crime going up after, you know, after a 20-year period of it going down. But now their stats are showing crime is back down. A uh, Let's see, 1.85% decrease in the murder rate, Sweet. which is good. Uh, property crime down 3.6%. Uh, cities, surprise, surprise, uh, still having higher rates. Uh, basically, what they found out, now this is going to be a real shocker to you, is that the fewer people you have, the less crime. No way. I know. You put enough rats inside of a cage, they will start eating each other. You mean there's more crime in Chicago than there is in Yellville, Arkansas? <laughs> I'm thinking... You know, I'm guessing that's probably true because everybody in Yellowville knows each other or is related to almost everybody, which is kind of the way it, yeah, it works, town. or at least you. Small town. They call it Yellville because you can yell from one end of the town that's to the right. other. Basically. I like it. That's perfect, Tom. Now, Ron, Ron didn't suggest for his wife uh, what I would have you know, liked to see her get into is the Etchinson uh, A12, 32-round <laughs> 12-gauge. 32 round yeah, drum things. mag. Yeah. You've never seen You've seen A12s. You've seen that. You've, seen the, oh, you've yes. seen the double A12s. Oh, yes. yes. Oh, they're sweet. They're it's ugly. Like, but yeah, but you know, there is uh, who? Caltech has one and somebody else has one. I can't remember. The name escapes me at the moment. These uh, double barrel pump shotguns. Hmm. Have you seen those? Double, double barrel, barrel pump. pump. Heard no. of it. Have not seen it, actually. Yeah, you got, you know, basically it's. Bang, bang, and then you pump it, and it pumps in two shells fresh, and you go bang, bang, pump, two shells, and it'll hold like, I don't know, 12 or 14 rounds. Huh. Wow. Two separate triggers? Uh, No. One trigger, one mechanism, and I am just so pulling a blank on the other couple. Side by mechanism. side? or over? Side by side. Okay. Very cool. I mean, it's wicked looking, short, uh, bullpup design. Cool. Uh, nasty and just so much fun. <laughs> I mean, we, we we go out to the range and we'll take, you know, put out a, a whole bunch of uh, one gallon water jugs mm -hmm. and then just blow the snot out of them. You're blowing water everywhere. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's like, <laughs> you know, all you got to do is pick up the empty, uh, blown up water jugs at the end and take them, put them in the trash. So it's kind of fun, reactive target. Yeah. No doubt. Shooting a jug like that uh, up close with a 12-gauge shotgun, oh, yeah, you're going to get wet. Yeah, my list just got a little bit longer. Thanks, Tom. <laughs> so, w it's weird uh, and fun. So yes. there you go. He's the great enabler. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. Let's see here. Uh, oh, let's see. Fired FBI Director James Comey pushes gun control, bashes in our yes. <gasps> What? Uh, no, shocking. This, uh, what are you going to do? The, uh, of course, for, just a reminder for those who don't remember that Eric Holder, former attorney general, was, uh, we have him <laughs> on video saying that, uh, Idiot. the goal is to brainwash Americans against guns. <laughs> that was our attorney general. Hmm. Brainwash Americans against guns. <sighs> Uh, let's see. Somebody in Florida running for office says when we get uh, elected that we're going to ban assault weapons. I mean, it kind of goes all the way back to this is what this midterm is about. They are really open. Well, they used to hide all this stuff. They pretended that they didn't want to ban guns. Now they say, yep, when we get elected, we're going to start banning guns as fast as we can. That's just what we're going to do, which is why we need Kavanaugh on the bench. Mm -hmm. Don't know what's going to happen there. That, that's that was up in the air. That thing could could go sideways at any moment. And so, if you had asked me a week or two ago, I'd have said, "Yeah, he's he's definitely in." At this point, I don't know. 
And who knows what's going to pop up any given, like, every 12 hours oh, in the sure. next week yeah, while they're sure. doing this FBI investigation. Well, yeah. I, I hope it's another one of those unintended consequences thing that crushes them in the election, and they uncover a bunch of other stuff yeah, on just, the other side that, you know, totally didn't expect to. I was just going to say, up. please vote. Oh, no doubt. Please vote. Well, yeah, vote and get everybody else to vote because uh, there going to be a lot of folks who go, yeah, I know. I, 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 I'm busy. I've got stuff going on. I don't care. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. Do not tell me you got anything else going on. Vote early. Vote often. You know, do yeah. the Chicago one. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, the uh, in the past several elections that they've been coined and have been accurate, you know, this is the most important election ever. Mm-hmm. And the last presidential election was, and the next one's going to be as well. But as cliche as this is, this is huge. This is a huge midterm. Yeah. Well, they're pretty well open about the coup that they are you know, engaged oh, yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, they don't. I mean, it is a political coup. And in coups, people, you know, I mean, they will do anything. It's just Lindsey Graham pretty much nailed it. I mean, he just said, God, you people will do anything for power. Mm hmm. And it's so true. I mean, and I, I they, wasn't a big Graham they, fan prior to the, the trial. By I, the way. I wasn't either, but I got to tell you, that speech was something else. Mm-hmm. He mm-hmm. was strong. Yep. So, you know, Jeff Flake is on his way out. It's a good thing because he was going to be on his way out for sure. Right. No doubt. At this point, I guess what he was doing was really uh, kind of setting up his whole uh, lobbyist business. Right. With what, I reach nonsense. across the aisle, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I could, I could peddle influence on both sides. Yep. Hey, I got something here, Tom, from the de- yes. Department of Why Would You Want to Carry a Gun? Okay. An Uber passenger has died following a physical altercation with his driver over directions. That was in August. Now, just recently, we had a Lyft driver. A um, guy was expecting a Lyft driver, and I can't remember what state. This just happened, I think, two days ago. Right. Um, a car pulled up that matched the description on his Lyft phone app, saying that this expect this car any minute. Sees right. the car. He walks up to talk to the driver to make sure it's a Lyft driver. And a Lyft driver, who's actually not the Lyft driver, gets out, punches him in the head, and gives him brain bleed. And apparently now he's dead. Holy cow. Mm-hmm. So, so he just went up to this car thinking that was his ride, his just Lyft verifying. ride. Yeah. And a guy jumps out, gets all incensed, and beats him, and now has yeah. killed him. Yeah, and it even sounds like it was a one-punch fight. They don't specify, but he says he punched him. He didn't say repeatedly or beat him. Yeah, people understand. They say, well, you know, he was unarmed. Yeah, yeah. yeah, no, no. Big dude comes after me. He wants to beat me up. I'm going to shoot him. Mm -hmm. Because one punch is all it takes to kill you or blind you or incapacitate you or put you in a wheelchair for the rest of your life. Here's the interesting question. If a large woman comes up and wants to beat you, do you have any differentiation there? You have the concept called the disparity of force. And, you know, it's one of those... You're going to, honestly, you're going to have a tougher time selling it in mm-hmm. courtroom. Uh, absolutely. That's why I'm asking. Are. Yeah. Um, it's not like I've sent a large woman to beat you up. I'm just asking hypothetically. Well, you know, of course, I'm just thinking, you know, then there are you know, certainly women who are really good at martial arts, mixed martial arts mm-hmm. and all the rest of it, who could hurt you severely. Mm-hmm. Not to mention the fact that, of course, you know, uh, women, you know, have guns and stab people and do all the rest of it. And women are perfectly capable of harm or murder. Just as much as anybody else. It's one of the reasons I'm, I'm always doing the whole thing about I can tell you a lot of things, but I can't tell you what this threat's going to look like, man or woman, old or young, yeah. you know, black, white, polka dotted, you know, clothed or naked. Mm-hmm. So you better get your head right so that you're not trying to reset mm-hmm. if something pops up and it's a threat, but it's not what you would imagine. Don't imagine anything. Mm-hmm. Well, case in point, uh, first time I lost a fight in my career uh, was in a controlled circumstance. And it was a four foot ten, eighty five pound Asian woman who just mopped the floor. With no, me. in martial arts. Yep. <laughs> just we're still friends. Please with the tell me there's a video. Distance. Oh God, no, yes. This, this, this was back in late nineties, <sighs> and uh, I mean she was cool. She'd beat me up and then help me get up off the floor mm-hmm. and tell me what I did wrong. And we'd practice a couple times, and just when I thought I could block it, she did something else. And she, <laughs> sure, of course, she's I, setting you up again. Oh, just yeah, yeah. Let you think you're ready, and then take you down again. But just because you think somebody's tiny or big, it, mm, hard hard <sighs> to make that call. You know, it's that old deal. Be nice to everybody. Don't go, you know, thinking that you're the uh, the badass out there. Mm-hmm. Especially, and you know, take that and apply it to where we spend a lot of our lives. Don't be flipping people off when you're driving around. You don't know that this person just got the diagnosis that you got three weeks to live, and he's looking for somebody to take it out on, and there's no consequences. Right. Just caught his They're, wife with another man, and you have the yep. same car, so. Yep. 
I mean, on and on. What are you doing? Just slow it down. See, I'd give them three fingers and let them pick one for themselves. I think that's a much more generic kind of way. And can you read in the middle, pal? <laughs> read between the lines. Yeah, I'm sure it goes over well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Especially at like, church events and stuff. I try to limit that a little bit. <laughs> My goodness. Uh, oh, wait. wait, wait I got to so look at this article. I'm, just, I'm, I'm cruising here. Let me find it. Let me find it. Because it said 10 millimeter. It got my attention. So I got to scroll down to find the 10 millimeter. Oh, popular 10 millimeter. No match for classic Magnum revolvers. No. That sounds like clickbait to me. Okay. Guy is basically talking about the 41 Magnum, which brings us to the 10 millimeter pistol. He says, I prefer the 41 Magnum over any 10 millimeter loading. Uh... Yeah, okay, I get it. The 41 Magnum is a great caliber. People understand it. Mm -hmm. And the 10 millimeter is popular. And that, gee, why would that be? It's because the semi automatic is a thousand times more popular than revolver is now. Mm -hmm. What's the capacity difference? Eight versus five or six? You're going to have six in your 41 Magnum. Okay, six. I wasn't sure if it was five or six. Yeah. Generally, you're going to have six in a 41 Magnum. Okay. And in a 10, you could have, well, let's see, the Glock 20, I think. I think it holds 15 rounds. Really? Yeah. Ooh. So you got 15 rounds of 10, which is, no, it's not quite as powerful as a 41 Magnum, but it is considerably more powerful than a 357. Mm-hmm. And you got 15 of them plus another 15 in your mag pouch. Mm-hmm. Hmm. So, you know, yeah, it's not. As powerful, it's that old deal. It, everything's a trade off, isn't it? I well, mean, yeah, I mean, a nine mil is not as powerful as a 308, but there's yeah. some logistics to consider there. <laughs> yep, and it, it makes people nervous when you're carrying your 308 into the uh, right. grocery store. Right. <laughs> and the holsters are real bare to find. Yeah, that's right. You know, so it's a, if, if it's inside the waistband, you end up like looking like Chester, you're hobbling around, you know. <laughs> What's that guy? Fu- he walks funny. Yeah, I know. But. But don't don't tick him off. <laughs> Pretend you don't notice. That's right. Uh, I don't know. It's um, I do love forty ones. I have an original Smith and Wesson model fifty seven, which was the original model forty or forty one Magnum revolver, six inch barrel, great gun, uh, just wonderful. But that's a big gun to carry around. Right. Well, what about uh, ammo pricing too? I mean, 10 has got to be cheaper than 41 mag. It probably is just because there's more of it. Right. Now, I will say this. The Supply 10 millimeter command. ammo is all over the place in how people are loading it. Oh, no doubt. I mean, some of it is just barely mm. 40 cal, and 40 I've, Smith & Wesson. I've shot some of that, too. Not, not impressed. Let's see. I'm reading this guy's article. It says, as far as power, the 10 millimeter has roughly the same ballistics of the obsolete 4440, a 200 grain bullet at 1,200 feet per second. The 41 Magnum will easily handle bullets weighing 275 grains, exiting the barrel at 1,300. Well, it'll handle it. Uh, yeah, this is kind of selective stuff because if you find, if you could find some of the old Norma 10 millimeter ammo, mm-hmm. and when you pull the trigger on that, you go, whoa. Hello. And it's just like, okay, that's the load that made the 10 millimeter famous. Gotcha. That was what... Um, well, what we need is a 10 mag. Well, the, t- the 10 is the 40 mag. I know, but if Andrew had oh. a 10 millimeter mag, you'd be oh. you'd be rocking. It could be magnumer. More <laughs> magnumer. More magnumer. <laughs> magnumer PI. <laughs> uh, this is a Tigers fan. He's, he likes pain, too. He's a masochist, evidently. Oh, is that right? Oh, they suck again. <laughs> <laughs> and he's a diehard fan, so... Oh, well, what are you going to do? Oh, goodness. Well, let's see. Uh, on the 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter, I can't say that. It's this 10 mm. Let's try that. I think that this resurgence of interest in the 10 is going to continue. This is my prediction. And I think that as gun makers look around and say, what are we going to do next? More of them are going to say, well, let's try the 10. Uh, you're already seeing that. Who was it? Uh, Ruger brought out their 1911. Mm-hmm. In 10, in a couple of different models. I think we're going to continue to see more 10s coming out. I'd like a 10 mm carbine. Mm-hmm. There's a couple of them out. Are there? I, th- I think Caltech has one. Damn you, Gresham! <laughs> and the list just got <laughs> no, longer. Uh, no doubt. And there you go. I had to do that to us. See, what you need is a 10 millimeter lever action. 
Ooh. Oh. Which would be like one of the dumbest things ever created. Yeah. So let's, let's go Don't with let that you. stop me. Rimless <laughs> cartridge. Yeah, no. Just if you're going to do the lever action, get a 45 Colt and just call it happy because you can get pretty good loads, pretty hefty loads in those. Speaking, speaking of levers. Yes. Yesterday I had my uh, normal sheriff's crew come out to do some shooting here. Mm-hmm. And they brought 308 AR-10 and they brought 308 Bolt and they're bringing all this, this you know, this personal stuff. It's not department sure. issue stuff. Okay. And they're blowing up stuff and I'm working, working. I said, yeah, I'm going to go out and at least greet the guys, talk to them a little bit. But I'm going to bring my Henry with me. <laughs> you know, in, com- in round comparison, 308 right. versus this, there's, there isn't one, but... Um, so I bring it on there. What's that? I'm like, that's a cowboy gun. <laughs> so for the next half hour, they didn't shoot any of their stuff. Shot all let your me ammo try up. that. Yeah, let me try that. Yeah, I didn't care. Uh, let me try that, man. This is great. <laughs> and it's like, okay, this you're, this is plinking compared to what you guys got, but have at it. They all loved it. And oh, a couple guys were lefties. Was 327? Yeah. 327? 327, okay. yeah. Oh, I didn't tell you I got it, did I? No. I did something. Oh, this I didn't was tell news. you I got it. Yeah. Because you've been lusting after this thing I, for, for a I long time. Been. I have been. And uh, I got picked up from Shell a little bit ago. And um, it's awesome. It's cool. I've been. Sh- I've shot a three, a few of the thirty-two or uh, three twenty-seven mags in it, and it's cool. The self-defense rounds, right? Uh, but based on the price, I wanted to shoot a few and say, okay, I'll save these for my revolver. Uh, so I've been shooting thirty-two S and W, which is it's kind of like the three fifty seven thirty-eight comparison. It's very comparable in, right. in the difference between the two, and that's what these guys were shooting. So it didn't break the bank, and they just had a ball with it. They didn't, I've never shot a lever. Why did you get it? I'm like, because I never shot a lever. I never <laughs> shot, and, it's fun. And, and now you know why. It's fun. They're cool. They're just cool. They really are. That is that is really fun. you got all these uh, cops out there. They're shooting their cool stuff, and you bring out the lever action, and everything stops because they want to shoot that. Right. Yeah, it was great. That's pretty typical, actually, when yeah. you bring something cool like that out. That's yeah. neat. Well, congrats on getting the, the rifle. I know you've been waiting a long time to get yeah, it. Yeah, I thought I told you. I actually got it before last week, but I thought I told you, but I evidently didn't. But it is awesome. That is great. It's my now, only lever, but it. that'll change. Yeah. Yeah, they, they, you're right. That'll change. Now what you need is a uh, 22 mm. because a 22 lever action is so much fun. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Thanks, Gresham. Really yeah. appreciate it. And then maybe a 4570. <laughs> and then, since you're on a roll. <laughs> as, as long as we're here. While we're there, right? Yeah, cheaper by the dozen. That's right. You know, like I always say, the three most expensive words are might as well. well. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Lordy. Okay. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. uh, Go shoot that and give us a full-blown range report next week on your uh, your new lever action rifle, okay? I will. And Tom, who you frequently ask, hey, have you been doing any shooting lately, Tom? Yes. Tom, why don't you answer for yourself? Yeah, I knew you I expected that question today, so I just bought a Ah. box of ammo on the way here. Just so I could say, yes, I've been shooting. So are you going to shoot after uh, the show's over here? Yep. Well, I still got some daylight. Okay. You know, you could have shot during the show. I mean, the windows are open, right? Yeah. We would have appreciated that. Yeah, just yeah. Fling, fling them out there. Yeah, Jim, just put all the lines on busy. I'm going to go shoot off a couple of rounds. <laughs> yeah, there's, a, there's a nice uh, target out there with four wheels and I could have used. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Jim's? Yeah, the old Chevy. Oh, nice. Okay. It's a 1960 Chevy ammo holder. We use the truck. It's got the big wing, <laughs> wing trunk. We just set all the ammo on top of that. And yep. it works great. Sure. Why not? It's better than a UTV, right? Or a UTI. It's way better than a UTI. Or that E2. Whatever. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. Urinary tract infection. Ooh. I'd much rather, much rather have a UTI. Uh, no, yeah, no. Don't leave it alone. <laughs> all right, guys. We'll have a good week, and we will uh, continue to do this as long as they'll let us. Okie dokie. I know. I think. Well, that wraps up another Gun Talk After Show. But if you want even more gun-related stuff, don't forget to check out Gun Dealio. It's the app for Apple and Android phones that connects you to all the Gun Talk shows, plus even more. And we'll catch you next time for the Gun Talk After Show. Yeah.